If you can't find Facebook ad creative and copy that actually works, I would hazard a guess that you're probably trying too hard to reinvent the wheel when it comes to your Facebook ad creative. You see, experienced Facebook advertisers like myself know that when something works for one brand, more likely than not is gonna work for other brands on the platform as well, if they're in a similar space. So we will actively spy on our competitors' ads in order to take inspiration from them for our creative and the messaging that we're using. However, most advertisers make one big mistake when they're looking at their competitors' ads, in that they will take inspiration from creatives that they think look nice or that have some sort of unique concept in their opinion, but they don't actually know if these creators have performed for that particular competitor. So today I'm gonna to show you a spy tool that I use called Big Spy that allows you to look at your competitor's ads, but you can also get insights into how they've actually performed before you use them for inspiration in creating your own creatives. So I'm gonna walk you through the actual platform, tell you a little bit about how I use it, and then at the end, I'm gonna show you some ads that I actually undertook the process for and created creatives from them so you can see the sort of before and after. So let's jump onto Big Spy now and start walking you through the platform. So we're inside Big Spy now and for Media Bang, I tend to you know ignore all these different things. I'll just come straight into Ad Spy and that's what we're gonna be using to do the competitor research, okay? So with Big Spy, there's two things you can do. You can either search for the product that you're gonna be advertising and then look at all the different advertisers and all the different ads all combined. Or if you have a specific list of advertisers that you like, you like to look at, your main competitors, you can search by the advertiser name and it will show you all of their ads. So what I'd say when you're first doing this process, you know, search for the product keywords, find out advertisers that are competitors that you might not know exist. And then when you're doing this as like a, a continuous process, you know, one of the recurring processes you do in your, your media buying protocols, just come in and search via that list. And then every now and again, go back to searching the product and see if there's any new advertisers that have entered the market, okay? So we're gonna type in um, a brand, the Udi, for this example, because they've got lots of ads. So let's just put them in and do exact search so we just get rid of anything that is, you know, like an affin affinity related or whatever. So you can see all the ads from the Udi have popped up. What you could do here is you could add other filters. So you could have the site types so or your CMS effectively. I honestly never use this section because I don't really care where they're what they're using to actually, you know, sell their products. I just care about the ads. And then you could also filter by the platform if you want to look at specific platforms. Again, I like to just find the best ads and look at them directly. It's generally going to be Facebook and Instagram ads anyway, okay, if you don't select anything. Now, one thing I will select though is the country or the region. So, you know, some things don't necessarily translate into different countries. So it's best to look at ads that are actually working in you, the market that you're advertising in as well. So I'm gonna just put that to the United Kingdom at the moment. But of course, down the line, once you have been running for a while, you've used the ads that are working in your current region to start off with, and you wanna try new things outside of the box, untested, you can go and look at other ads in other countries to try and take them as inspiration but there's just a higher risk with them because they've not been proven in the market that you're advertising in. So you could also come into this box, select the marketing objective. Um, again, I just tend to leave that open and I can read the actual ads and see what the objective is. Or you could come in and filter by images and videos, carousel, vertical, horizontal. So for now, we're gonna leave this open as well. We wanna see everything because we're just starting. But let's say you, you start to understand that video works best in your account maybe you're more interested in filtering out videos when you're coming and doing this process, okay? So we'll leave it for now. And then the other thing is the date range. So because we're doing this as if it was the start of a new product, okay? Advertising for the first time or first time we've done this process in a while, I think 90 days is a good window. You know, last 90 days is still relevant 
but also it gives you a big pool of data to look at. But of course, if you were doing this process every two weeks or every month, you might want to look at seven days or a 30 day window because otherwise you're going to be shown the same ads at the top that were performing you know, in the last 90 days because they've had more data, more impressions, so they're always going to be shown at the top, okay? So the one benefit you get of a spy tool over and above using Meta Ads Library is, well, two benefits really. The first benefit is you can see ads that are now archived by the brand. So what Meta Ads Library lets you do is see ads that any brand is currently running. But a spy tool gives you way more information. You can see ads that that brand has paused. Now, just because they pa- that brand's paused the ads doesn't mean those ads are not good ads to look for creative inspiration in. Because that brand may have paused the ads because they've just reached a scale above the point that those ads are working for their business or maybe the particular creative has fatigued for them and they've moved on to other things and it's just, you know, sitting in the backbone. They've never relaunched it again. But if you were to come and repurpose that ad, there is quite a high chance that, you know, if it's proven itself for a similar brand in the past, it's maybe going to work for your brand just repurposed. So that's one of the benefits spy tools give you. They give you stuff that isn't currently running as well as stuff that is currently running. And then obviously the second benefit is we can come to this section and we can sort stuff by metrics of per- metrics that tell us the performance of the ads, okay? So if I come into here and what I'd normally do is I'd either select impressions or popularity. So impressions, of course, how many times has the ad been served in the platform? You can say pretty confidently if a advertiser has, you know, their their ad, if Udi's, for as the example, if they've served an ad the most amount of times, that would suggest that that ad is working for them because if it was not working, why would they spend so much money behind it? Why would they let it run for such a long time to allow it to have the most impressions? You know, they're only gonna keep something running that is working for their business. So it's a good signal that, that if, if it's got the most impressions, it's probably something that worked. The other thing is popularity and Big Spy basically, you know, takes a view on something looking at a number of factors. I think it is impressions, comments, and um, how many times that has been used or whatever. And it'll work out, okay, this is this is a ranking of popularity. So you can use either one, but I'm going to show you impressions as that's the one I use the most. So I'm going to click that and now all of the ads are going to be filtered by the most impressions to the least. Which means I can come in and look at these top ones and go, well, these have the most amount of information for me because they're getting the most impressions. These are the ones that I want to try and replicate okay so what i'd come in and do is i'd i'd look at the copy um is there any patterns is it short is it long are they using emojis what messaging are they are they using i would look at the creative in terms of trends is there any trends where they're using mainly videos are they using images is it ugc style is it graphic design high-end production like what what are any trends you can see just scanning down a sort of top top ones for copy and creative and then you can pick some of the ones that you know you think you can make creative for or that you think are good that you think would fit your brand and start making or start analyzing them to be able to make iterations of them so what i tend to do if we take this first one as an example i'd come up to this um, right hand corner three dots and you can see there's a list of different options so if we'd search by the product keywords rather than the advertiser at this point, we could go and filter out all the ads for that particular advertiser. Or we could hide it from the list if we didn't think it was a good advertiser, okay? You can also, another thing I like is see the landing page. So I can click on that and it's gonna show me the landing page that that particular ad is connected to. So you can see here, they're sending it to a collections page. So that's interesting. Maybe it's better to run this to a collections page rather than the home page or to a sales landing page. That's something that for your industry that you could get insights of by looking at the spy tool. And it's really, really quick and easy to do. You know, I can just come in and do 
Oh, oops. I could come in and do all of these really, really quickly versus as library, we'd have to go into each individual one and go to the landing page and then come back out constantly to the main feed. So it really just saves you a lot of time. So that's that done. Uh, what we then do is we want to come in and look at the ad details. And there's a few things that we can gather from this. So let's just pause it. So what I do is I'd come in, I'd have a look at the actual copy. You know, what can I see here? How can I analyze that? Take insights from it. I then look at the creative, I'd watch it. I can come and actually download it, put it into my swipe file, both to send to designers, but also just to keep a record of if I'm ever coming in and doing this process again. I already know what I've looked at previously from that swipe file and can revisit in the future because you've done the work. And you know, you can look at the headlines as well. I can look at what call to action they're using. That might be something of interest if I'm always using shop now, but my top competitors are always using learn more. Maybe I want to change the call to action on my ads. Okay. So that's kind of really the overview of Big Spy and how I would use it. It's quite self-explanatory once you're in these sort of platforms. And as promised, I'm going to now show you my examples of ads that I've gone through in this process, found ones that are working for competitors, and then got a designer to actually create ones for my own brand, showing you how they are repurposed. Okay, so I'm going to show you that in just a sec. But first, I want to just cover the actual pricing of this platform so I can kind of recommend what what you guys should get if you want to go down the route of using a spy tool okay so i have the pro plan but if you're just someone running one brand you know you're running your own brand i think the pro plan is probably overkill for you you're really not going to be doing this process enough to justify you know 99 dollars a month i think the basic nine dollar a month plan is completely sufficient and in fact, will make you, yeah, will just make your life so much easier than trying to do this manually. And in fact, the saving of just creating ads and testing is far in excess of what these kind of things cost. So yeah, basic plan if you are, a, you know, a, a business owner for an e-com brand, that is perfectly fine. If you're someone running an agency, you know, you've got multiple clients and depending on the revenue of those clients, you're probably going to be doing this process quite a lot, weekly, fortnightly. Um, you're probably going to have to go for the pro plan. But, you know, if you're an agency, you're obviously going to get the benefit of that. Um, and you can you can pass that on to your client. You know, you can go through this process of analyzing competitors. Really, it would probably help you. You can, you can do it so quickly that it probably help you sell the accounts. Um, going through this kind of process okay so i do actually have um, a link in the description where you can go and try out big spy and if you want to pay for it that is an affiliate link so i will get a small commission on it and in fact there's also a discount code so you guys also would get a discount on it of 10 percent. okay so yeah go give that a try but as I, as i promised i'm going to show you how i would take ads from competitors and use them as a real example example right so this column on the left is basically competitors obviously i've got more i just wanted to show you two to make it easy and this is how i've got my designer to repurpose them for my own brand now one thing i'm going to make very very clear you don't want to go in and just copy all the ads from one competitor and in fact you don't really want to copy ads these ones are probably the most similar i would ever do I'd rather take more inspiration and not be as similar, but the way these worked out, they were very, very similar, okay? But you don't want to look at all the ads from one brand and just use replicate them all because people will know the brand from seeing it on the platform and they're going to recognize that, hang on, this is just a copy of that other brand. They came first, so you just look like a copy and it almost makes that brand look better makes them look more established a bigger fish in contrast because you put yourself beside them copying their work as a copycat okay so definitely avoid doing that but of course if there's multiple advertisers like you can see here you can take one ad from each and have it very very close 
and also pair that with some of your own unique ads. So when it's in the full mix, it's very, very hard to distinguish that actually you've taken inspiration from someone else's ads. Okay, so you can see this one here. It is super, super similar. I've literally just changed the messaging and that's the kind of thing you want to do. If it's a proven concept, I don't know what it is in this that has been proven. So let me just try and keep it as similar as possible to try and establish what that thing is. Now, you could do more. This is me launching this new product. So I'm just taking one of each, trying to find something that works. But if I was doing this as my kind of fortnightly process of trying to find new creative, I might take that concept and make three different variants. So maybe I try one where I'm using the Z's in a similar format as this. Maybe I try one where I have this headline. Maybe I try one where I use the product brand name as the headline. Um, maybe I use one where I'm trying to uh, make something similar to what they're saying it works for, okay. Uh, the benefit, and they've used the benefit, I've used the product description, right? So whatever, guys, you, you're just trying to like find variables and that's what you could do. But this one, I've just used the same. I've used one creative. And then very similar in this one. So you can see like here, they've got a headline. And I know from experience that there's something in this headline that could actually be resonating based on the angle it's hitting. So I've gone, well, let me actually try that specific headline because that might be a factor. Let me not change it for a different headline. Let me use five different benefits like they have, uh, benefits and some of them are features, I think. I've added the testimonials like they have. Of course, I've used my own testimonials and they've had a stamp of one of their USBs of the brand. You know, you get 25% off by using the code Deep Sleep. Well, what's a USB of our brand? Well, we give a 30 day money pack guarantee. Okay, let's put that in the same position. And yet again, I could I could do the same thing and um, you know, try different variants, different testimonials, whatever. But as I said, this is launching, so we're just doing one of each. If I find something that works on the next phase of testing, I will then get different iterations of that ad to test, okay? So guys, that is it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Definitely go give Big Spy a try. Use the link in the description and yeah, let me know how you get on with it or if you have any questions on how to use it, just leave it in the comments and I will happily help you out. Okay, so until next time, have a good week and I will see you very, very soon.